Looks like my gas gauge is registering empty. Got a fuel range warning and a service engine soon light has come on. We're gonna hook up the uh, OBD sensor and uh, see what the report has to say. To read the air codes, we're gonna use this Bluetooth Blue Driver scanner. It's an OBD2 scanner that uh, connects to your tablet or laptop. So simply just find the slot underneath your dash and plug it in. Once it's plugged in, simply just need to turn the engine to the on position. And then start the Blue Driver app on your tablet. Okay, and then simply just click on read codes. It's not, it uh, doesn't seem to be connected yet. Sometimes you have to, there you go. Should be connected now, connecting now. All right, and you're gonna wanna click the scan button and read the check engine light. Once it's finished scanning, it should give you the uh, error code. And we see here that we have a P0463 error uh, fuel sensor. So the possible causes are the uh, fuel level sensor has failed and the top report of fixes are to uh, replace the fuel level sending unit. So that's what we'll do next. First thing we're gonna do is remove the back seats. And to do that, we gotta remove these two plastic panels here. That's gonna, that those are going to contain these little picks under the bottom here. Then we've got to remove those bolts. Uh, I think they're 16 millimeters. And then we'll go into the back. In the back seat, we're going to pull the lever, push down the back seat. And underneath here, there's going to be a couple more bolts, 16 millimeter bolts that we'll have to take out. There's that one there and that one there. Those two should uh, should do it. Now we got one seat removed. Once the bolts are removed from the uh, rear of the seat, we're gonna have to remove those uh, airbag connectors for the side airbags and that little spring guy here that should just pop right off. That's uh, the release for the uh, the seat to, uh, to go back. So remove those guys, and you should be able to remove this back seat after this. Once I lifted the back seat, I could see that there was another little 16 millimeter bolt hiding underneath the seat. So, gotta go ahead and remove that one as well. One more hiding on this side. Now with the uh, back seat removed, you can actually see the access panel where our fuel pump is. That's how we're gonna get access to it. First we're gonna remove the uh, passenger side rear seat. Uh, so to do that, Again, there's a few more bolts underneath here. We're going to remove both of those. And then we'll go and remove the ones in the front again. Same thing with the other side. You have this little piece here that you're going to slide out. Plastic piece. Makes a little wiggling. And underneath, you're going to have that same little spring release for the back seat. You're just going to pull that off. Get access. And another bolt there I can see that's hiding. So we'll take that off next. Once again, we're gonna have to remove those three side airbag clips. Now on the passenger side, we're just gonna remove the uh, front two bolts and we should be able to remove the uh, rear passenger seat after this. Should have known, once I lifted the seat, there is one more bolt that looks like I have to remove. So I just moved the uh, front seats forward as far as they can go so I can put the uh, rear seats up against them uh, just to get them out of the way uh, so we have access to our floor panel here and uh, we're going to be removing these uh, screws next to get the uh, panels off and have access to the fuel tank uh, this one has the uh, power that's going to it so we'll uh, remove that next once we get these panels off these just screw a uh, quarter turn to the right so that we can then pop them off
have it. And remove the power to the fuel pump and bleed the lines. Once we remove the uh, power to the fuel pump, we're going to want to remove these two fuel lines next, but before we do that, we're going to start the car up and bleed the lines so that uh, the, we can remove as much pressure as we can so we don't get a lot of spillage when, these, uh, when we pop these guys off. Since we're going to be working in the uh, fuel tank, we're going to want to disconnect the battery. Uh, so I always start by disconnecting the negative side first. The reason for that is that the negative line here is actually connected to the chassis. So if we were to actually start disconnecting the positive side first and hit a piece of the chassis with the other side of a wrench, we're actually going to create a short and get a nice big shock. So like I said, start with the negative side and then um, that's probably all you need to do, but just out of a abundance of safety, I'm going to connect the negative side and then the positive side. Once the battery is disconnected, I recommend uh, unscrewing the fuel cap just so that we uh, really any of the uh, pre extra pressure on the lines before we uh, remove the fuel pump. For this next part, uh, I recommend getting some uh, towels, bucket, your dirty towels. Probably going to get a little bit of gas builds here and some um, some garbage bags or something to you know keep the uh, gas away from the carpet. First thing we're going to do is use some spray silicone and just uh, put it into these connectors here so that we uh, avoid any cracking later on. Okay, now we're ready to disconnect the fuel lines. Next thing we're going to do is take a screwdriver and just give it a little tap here in the end to uh, remove the uh, fuel ring locks. Once you get the fuel pump out, we're just going to replace the fuel sender with the new one that we ordered here from Napa. Once we've got the uh, driver side fuel sender um, replaced, we're going to just tie a string to the uh, fuel sender line that go connects to the other side on the passenger side there so that we can uh, fish it back through uh, later on when we're putting it back together. Now that we got the uh, passenger side out, we're uh, ready to replace the sender from the other side and then uh, we'll put it back together. Before we put it back in, we're just going to also replace the gasket. The uh, fuel sender came with a new one, so we'll, we'll put that on and uh, push it back in. Before uh, securing the, uh, the lock ring, just make sure that the uh, part with the W is facing the front of the car, just like it was when uh, we took it off. Now we're just going to start the car up. Looks like there's no more air code. And the fuel level is reading just hair less than three quarters of a tank. Looks like we are good to go.